we have a, a whakatauki in New Zealand around housing. A whakatauki is a proverb, and it goes like this. Te whare ki te hanga i te tangata. Te tangata ki te hangaia i te whare. What that means is the first house that we come from is the womb of our mother, and that house provides everything that we need to live. And as we progress through our lives, we try and replicate that house in the homes that we build to live in. So as you can see on the presentation, our vision is thriving whānau, or thriving families. And we are the Ministry of Māori Development. So because of Treaty of Waitangi obligations, the New Zealand Government has a specific ministry that ensures all other government ministries or all of government provide and ensure that Māori aspirations around housing, around health, education, employment, etc., are being achieved. We are a small ministry. We have 350 staff, um, a large number based in Wellington, and then the rest spread across a regional network so that staff are then able to engage directly with the, the whānau, the families, the tribes, that are impacted by all of the issues that I had mentioned earlier. So as we talked about, as we discussed, Māori as a treaty partner, also Māori as a citizen of New Zealand. Our Māori land context today is quite different from when the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in 1840. In 1840, Māori owned all the land. Today, um, Māori own less than 5% of the land. An average Māori land block is 43 hectares in size and has on average 45 owners and is mainly located in rural locations. There are lots of barriers to building on Māori land. As you can see, access to finance. No banks are keen to lend um, on a development where there are 45 or more owners. There is access to infrastructure issues, as most of the land is in rural locations. And as we, those whānau that are able to gain access to loan finance through banks, there are caveats on that. So the homes have to be on wooden piles, not a concrete foundation. And that is so if that family are unable to continue to meet those mortgage payments, the home can be uplifted and removed from the land. We're working on that. But I must add, the New Zealand government is working hard to ensure our Māori housing aspirations are being achieved. So we look at housing as a foundation for well-being. We talk about families living in warm, safe, affordable, secure homes with all the support needed to contribute to their well-being. We talk about our social determinants to well-being, an example being when a family is in a warm, 
healthy, affordable home, then they have achieved their housing outcome. They then tell us that when they are living in warm, healthy, affordable homes, the children don't get sick anymore. So they achieve a health outcome. Because the children don't get sick anymore, they attend school and do well, so they achieve an education outcome. Because they are able to live on their land, connected culturally, multi-generations of family members, you have grandparents, you have parents, and you have the children, the tamariki, and the mukupuna, the grandchildren, all living together. There is always somebody at home to care for the children. So mothers are now able to go to work. You have an employment outcome. Because we have our tipuna, our kaumatu, our grandparents living in the home, when the children come home from school, they teach them about their culture, they teach them about their whakapapa or their genealogy, and they teach them how to weave and how to do all of the traditional things, to make the traditional food. So we have what we would refer to as an intergenerational knowledge transfer that enhances a cultural outcome. We can see no reason why that cannot happen here. However, apart from all of the effort that the government is making, we still have issues in Aotearoa very similar to the issues that you have here in New Caledonia. 31% of Māori aged 15 years and over own or partly own their home, and that is declining. Vaimua touched on some of those reasons, but one of them being cost. The increases in cost of importing material into New Zealand is then passed on to those looking to build. 50% of all Māori live in rental accommodation, and one in three public housing or government-supported tenants are Māori. We also have a significant number of Māori 28,000 living in severe housing deprivation. And that's 28% of the New Zealand total. So it is a very large number. So the government has recognised that it has a significant role to play in Māori housing but being the deliverer of those, those services may not necessarily be the best place for the government to play. Um, so we are now supporting a different approach and piloting it, a tribal-led approach. And our um, findings to date, what we are finding is this enables Māori housing to be delivered at a scale and and at a pace that the government cannot do. The tribes and the landowners bring the land for development at no cost. We then have a by Māori, for Māori approach where the government's role is to support and to enable that model to succeed. It then creates conditions for local and to collaborate sharing best practice, sharing ideas. And I think today's symposium is about that. We've pulled in people, I've met people from Tahiti today, I've met people from New Caledonia today and from France, and we are creating at a macro level what pulling together the sharing of those ideas looks like. And we now need to get it down to the tribal and the family level. We develop, it enables you to develop industry capability and capacity. And one of the models that we've just recently supported, they've now taken control of part of the supply chain and are now starting to build 
their own transportable homes to be delivered out onto site. Because they've taken control of that part of the supply chain, they have now got apprentices and cadets training to be the future builders for their tribe. It also then, the models we are developing through government is then supporting the tribes to then be able to reinvest the profits, the capital, to ensure that there's continued growth and sustainability. I will also add that in 2021, the government invested $730 million into Māori housing to get this pilot off the ground. 350 million of that is for construction of the homes. 380 million is for the necessary infrastructure. It has been the largest investment into Māori housing ever by the New Zealand government. So this is a model that we shared with John and Vaimua when they, they came. And basically, at the top of the apex of, of, the, of the maunga, of the mountain, are the families that are in need of housing. And it is locally led. At the bottom of that maunga, or that apex, is the government. And our role is to enable this to happen. And in the middle are the tribes, and they are the pivot, they are the link, the conduit to making this happen. And as we talked about earlier on the side of the slide, we're starting with housing. And if we can get it right with housing, then why wouldn't it work for health? And then if we can get it right with health, why couldn't it work for education? Why couldn't it work for employment? So where to next? We have engaged with four iwi tribal entities. They have all signed their partnership agreements with the government. This is a big move for the government and I say that because I am part of the government for now um, to work in partnership because we are used to being in a master-servant contractual relationship that I think all the officials sitting in the room will, be, will understand that type of relationship. So now we're talking partnership and it requires a different way of thinking and a notion of reciprocity as we help the iwi, our tribes, support whānau into housing. They then help us as a government achieve our outcomes to ensure that all of the citizens of New Zealand are living in warm, healthy, affordable homes. We also know a one of those tribes is now already delivering homes to their people and they just recently opened their own building factory. And they, at their peak, will have up to 24 homes at a time in different stages of construction. They've also just engaged six cadets and apprentices that will come on and are training to be builders. And as I talked earlier, if this model is successful, there's no, uh, it provides um, an alternate distribution model and mechanism for the government to get funding out to a part of the population that the government hasn't been able to reach for the last 20 or 30 years. So we are very wedded to this project to ensure that it succeeds because the current regime that we have in New Zealand, the current model, as hard as we are working, is not, su not succeeding for everyone. So the government won't stop doing what it's doing for 80% of the population, but for 20% of the population, we're going to do something different.
So e rauranga tira mā, mā te atua e, e tiaki i ngā wā katoa, kia tau te mauri. Peace be with you. And now I'm handing over to my whanaunga, Helmut, who is actually leading at the head of one of these, of one of the iwi, and they are doing very different things in New Zealand. Kia ora tātou.